and welcome to another episode of By the Railside Podcast Movie Review. Uh, with me this week, we've got Jordan. I drink milk. Justin. I drink lactose free milk. And Jeff. I miss milk. <laughs> and I'm Zach. I forgot to say that. He drinks milk. Yeah, milk is good. <laughs> Mark on my parlor with my boggle. (laughs) Fuck out of here. Delicious. This week, we watched the movie The Stanford Prison Experiment. It came out in 2015. Right? Yeah. 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 Good. I didn't have the right thing up. Uh, It is based off of the actual Stanford Prison Experiment that was conducted by uh, Philip Zimbardo. Uh, It was a social psychology experiment uh, that wanted to investigate the psychological effects of perceived power. Um, And what they did was they focused on the the struggle between prisoners and prison guards. Um, What did you guys think of the movie? This movie got my lefty blood boiling, man. Why is that? Oh, it was just like, clearly, like, I don't know. To me, it was just like when you have no overhead on, like, power and no checks and balances, like, clearly people just go off the fucking deep end. As soon as the, they were like, the like the coin flip for the guards immediately, and they're like, as soon as they brought all the guards together, they're like, you guys are better than everyone else. Like he said, like, you were picked for your superiority or your greatness or whatever during the interviews, but it was literally a coin flip. And then they're just like, oh, I'm the best. And they're like, and you are the authority. And they're like, wow, that's crazy. And it just fucking went off the deep end. Yeah, that was, uh, that was one thing. But I think that it led to, well, we'll get into it after we talk about the movie, but it led to um, some of the... Uh, criticisms of the actual experiment uh, because it's been said that Zimbardo actually sort of coached um, the guards in order to get the reactions that he wanted. So um, it was some ethics concerns for sure. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. But uh, the movie itself, I don't know. It, it, the experiment was conducted in the seventies. Everyone looked pretty. 70s ish, uh, many mustaches, yeah. Those are some greasy fucking porno stashes. For I, had, sure. I had a very big problem with the fucking the nerdy researcher's toupee or whatever the fuck the squirrel he kept on his head because that was the worst hair piece I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Which the guy, the blue shirt, Kyle, yeah, the, the Kyle? Like, real, real the skinny fucker, yeah. Yeah, his hair was intense. Like, it looked like someone just threw it from across the room at the last second before every scene. Like, I hope yeah. it gets on there. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Put this on, put this on. <laughs> just it's still beating. The heartbeat. <laughs> or the uh, the other guy that was the supposed to be the actual, um, the the warden, he had, like, a, he had, like, my mustache. Like, it was, like, barely there. Yeah. Just like not like if I don't tri- if I trimmed it down to, to what it is now, it's just like like they you just wiped it in the shower drain just to get some on there. But uh, other than that, like everything looked good. Everything was uh, it seemed pretty consistent with uh, uh, with the experiment itself. Like it stayed. Uh, they definitely had like a dramatization. I don't know if his actual girlfriend was involved in the study itself, but then they, they, because it's a fucking Hollywood movie, you gotta have some sort of love interest or something in there. She she was. Yeah, well, they they actually did marry because they say that at the end, but like, to me, that was just more of a like, this guy is clearly has ethics problems because he's dating one of his students. That's what it represented to me, anyways. Hundred uh, percent. she was involved in the second half of the original experiment. Yeah. Okay. She was also the one to convince him to actually stop the experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the movie, Jeff? I thought the movie was fucking horrendous. Like, uh, I'm I'm trying really hard to separate it from the experiment itself. So if you just look at it as a movie. 
the pacing in it was awful. It doesn't follow any form of like accepted storytelling uh, functions at all. Like the climax of the movie to me was when, again, I'm terrible with names. The first guy that left had his like mental breakdown and was like super freaking out and everything was going to hell there. To me, that was the climax of the movie. But that was like halfway through and then everything just kind of calmed down a bit like they were still being assholes. But there was no like, oh, my God, Omega drama after that. It was just like, well, now we'll kind of talk about the ethics on the other side of the wall. And this guy will get him to swear. And it's like what the, the, the whole second half of the movie was just like, why? Why is this here if the climactic part's already over? And then the climactic part didn't even have a payoff. It's just like, oh, hey, he left off screen because reasons. Yeah, I don't know if I was misremembering the, like, fucking when I did this in civics class in, like, grade 9 or whatever the fuck it was, but I always thought at some point during the experiment that they swapped places, and I kept expecting that to happen, and then it never did, and I thought after the other professor saw him in the hallway, he was like, what's your, what's your, uh, like, X factor to see, like, introduce something new to see how it will change? I thought that's when he was going to swap it, but then he was just like, fuck you, and I was like, what? And then they just kept going, and I was so confused. What do you mean by swap places? I thought, for whatever reason, I had it in my head that at some point during the experiment, the guards and the prisoners swap places. Oh. But I don't know why I had that in my head. But that's why yeah. I, I... But either way, like, it, it felt weird that that guy came in and was like, what's your... Like, what are you going to introduce to... Uh, however you worded it. Um, and then he was your just like, fuck off. Independent and, variable. Yeah. And then, like, why even put that scene in? I don't know. I guess it was just to kind of point out that he was not doing it properly. But... There was a lot of scenes in the movie that were just to keep it in line with what actually happened. The movie, to me, seems like a halfway between a documentary and a dramatization because they did so much to keep it in line with the original experiment that they ruined any kind of movie quality to it they're just like hey we're gonna put this random scene at the beginning to introduce a character the girlfriend that doesn't come in until the last 40 minutes of the movie and she's only there to go you're doing this wrong i'm going to leave you if you don't stop like that whole scene at the beginning could have been condensed into like a 20 second thing when she walks into the room like near the end or whatever one of the other people could have been like who's this he and he could have been like oh a student of mine blah 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 uh she needs work experience or whatever the fuck just like he did with the black guy like i don't know why she got her own little scene that had no relevance for three quarters of the movie uh one word breasts probably gotta have no there's they gotta have at least one little bit of sex appeal in a movie or it's not a hollywood film right that guy's mustache. That's not sex appeal. That's sex offender. Uh, they had them mustache. pretend to be camels and hump each other. It's pretty sexy. Which, as far as I know, yeah. never happened. So that was really <laughs> weird. Yeah, like, when you can do whatever you want as a prison guard, the first thing comes to mind, obviously, make them pretend they're camels. Yeah. Now hump the camel. Come on, you're not doing it right. Don't come. What? <laughs> That was weird to me. I was very uncomfortable when he was like yelling that at them. Like, you know, they're not actually fucking, right? Yeah, the guy didn't know how. That's why they were. No, they were showing him. him. Like, oh yeah, that's why he didn't want them to come. Like, you, you come, you can't show him how to have sex with a camel anymore. Yeah, I think that was just to just to prove like they literally had full control. Yeah, and the, the, showing that the prisoners actually had like. They accepted the fact that they could not do anything to get out. Yeah, of it. it was kind of like a. And... It kind of played out like a horror movie at some point. Like they established the premise, and then it's just like 30, 40 minutes of just like psychological. Slow build up. Like, yeah, like psychological. Like, uh, I don't even know how you would describe it in this movie. It's not horror, but like, it's just abuse like, psychological and it just, torment yeah like it just keeps going and going you're like okay like are they gonna i don't know like if, if it was a movie you'd be like all right yeah they'll rally together and like take out the three fucking guards because they say at the beginning there's only nine of them and then they have their little uh resistance and then one group 
fucking doesn't go through and they just give up and it's like oh fuck and then it just goes back to more torment <laughs> yeah and to really drive home like it, it, again it's so weird in certain parts it was so accurate to the to the actual experiment and then others they're just like well we don't want to seem make it seem like anything good ever happened but in the actual experiment the one uh um cell block or the one cell that just did what they were told all the time they got like a whole bunch of uh bonuses more than just like that one meal it showed in the thing they got like super good bonuses and whatnot but yeah, the movie's like, no, that's too positive. Yeah, and the movie's like, no, that's too positive. We're not going to put that in there. We're going to make them hump each other instead. Yeah, but yeah. ham and cheese sandwiches, bro. And that glasses. Was delicious. Glasses. Yeah. I can see and I get to eat fake ham. Yeah, so I mean, like, they basically just dehumanize them as soon as they came in and then just like, like I said make the guards feel like they're superior in every way and then like one evil guy and then they all just kind of fall in line but um yeah i don't know it was like i don't know the whole time i was just like just unionize and fucking fight back <laughs> yeah i was making a lot of comments to zach throughout the whole movie like no this is how i would do it like i would be in the hole for the whole thing i'd be like the guy who would need his sausages like nah i live here now sorry i'm not doing what you want well, I think it's yeah. that one was hard. Like, like I know they had like in the original experiment, they had a bunch of people leave the experiment. I don't know if they actually had people swap in, but to already have like everyone broken, and then the new guy shows up, and he's just like, "Nah, this is an experiment. I don't know what you guys are talking about." Like, you have to work so hard to break that guy. The original experiment did have two people leave, and when the last guy showed up, he actually did go on a hunger strike, just like uh, in the movie. But it was a hunger strike, not just because the sausages looked like the buckets of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were leaving out a lot of details. Like, mm -hmm. one detail in the experiment, and something that actually th didn't use, they had a, a phrase, which was, if someone said, I exit the experiment, that was it. They were done, they were free to leave. Yeah, which but, was in the contract they all signed. Yeah, but not one person said it. But I mean, no one said it in the actual experiment either, right? So. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. Yeah, like, they, for some reason, I don't really know why, but for some reason, they, all of their brains just, like, shut off to reasonable thought. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of, like... They mentioned it like during the visitation thing. They're like they have no rights. It's because in in America, at least, I don't actually know what the Canadian uh, law is for for criminals. But in America, like the Thirteenth Amendment, um, prisoners can be treated like slaves. So they don't actually have rights or anything like that. Um, so that's why they were just like they could just do whatever the fuck they want, and that's actually replicating American uh, prison system. Um, but one thing that's kind of, uh, weird too, is like when they do the jailbreak, um, and he gets like punished for it and stuff like that. I think in most European countries, I think at least Germany, um, if you break free from prison, you, and the, you don't get caught, like, I don't think there's any extra, at least any extra punishment, or maybe you just get away scot-free, um, because they recognize it as like a, a, a normal, like human reaction or animalistic reaction to try to break free from prison. Yeah, I believe it's they don't add any uh, time onto your sentence, whereas yeah. here they're just like, nah, get back in there. Oh, yeah, I, that's good. I, I <laughs> nice fun, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Mexico, Belgium, sentence. Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, and Austria all have that rule. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Um, and the, I guess, I, hadn't, I didn't look, at, like, the last time I heard about the, the actual study was in, like, first year psych in university so i didn't actually look into the study before i watched the movie so i just went in and i was like oh yeah like it was a certain amount of time it was like 14 days is like the movie said okay and then so much shit happened at one time and then they were just like day two i'm like holy fuck this, <laughs> yeah. this is gonna be like that was a lot of shit that happened this movie's gonna be fucking five hours long but then, then I I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay, they ended it after a certain amount of days. It was just like six days in total, so it made a little bit more sense why everything 
insane was happening. But it was uh, it was definitely it was an interesting movie, and it made you think like definitely what I like what you would be like in either role. And I don't know. It was good that they showed like some of the guards not actually wanting to be like the dickheads, like that that fucking the John Wayne guy who was like, you know what, I'm putting on an accent. Yeah, like he was just trying to recreate a character from a movie. Yeah, and be yeah. an absolute piece of shit. Like, I wonder how far I can push people. And then he was surprised when they were like, they didn't like him. Yeah. Wait a minute, why don't you like me? You just tortured yeah, me. In- in the actual experiment, it was, I mean, out of nine guards that were actively participating, uh, it was only three of them that took their power to abusive levels. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. And that's like the ACAB thing, right? Like, just fucking those other people had to just say something, right? But they never do. Yeah. They yeah. just sat back and watched. Because it was really, even in the movie, it was the long-haired guy. Well, even somewhat, he was just following... Uh, john wayne yeah um the the tall guy i can't remember his name but from the first shift the the tall guy seemed to be the main instigator and then uh was he really tall or was his other two guards is really short they were real short yeah (laughs) Um, i was so confused when they first walked around the corner i was like wait what the fuck and then uh pedo stash from third shift he was just way too into choking people Oh yeah, the guy who actually clocked. Yeah, eight six one two. I also noticed. I think it was around the second day. Um, they like really fell into character as prisoners because they started referring to each other, even in the cells sometimes as numbers instead of names. Yeah, that was after the whole like you're not allowed to move from the line until you know your names, right, or yeah. your numbers. Yeah. Well, when they wrote the letters too, like the the one guy that didn't know how to fuck or whatever he signed his name as his number um and then we find out later that he is homeless and that's like an actual thing that happens in the states too is when homeless people need like health care um or it's like minus 40 out or whatever they will do a petty crime to get arrested and go to prison so that they can have uh social safety nets <laughs> that's yeah. not just in the states uh happens well, a lot in canada too yeah. it happens in dunville quite a bit yeah it's like fuck me Hey Jim, back again. You know it. Cheaper yeah, than we'll rent. just walk by and break the uh, uh, mirror off a cruiser or something like that. Fuck the cops. Now house me and feed me, you bastard. <laughs> yep. That's exactly it. Shit in your fucking car. Because why pay them to like live a life when they can live a life in a box? And then you have to pay for that anyways. So we take away uh, all of, uh, what's his name? Bezos' money. Give it to the homeless. Just restart. Yeah. Or or just get rid of the fucking private prisons. Oh, I thought you were going to say homeless. Like well, this. yeah. I can't, I can't the, way, the way I would get rid of the homeless is by giving them, like, UBI. That sounds like socialism. I'm a socialist. You son of a bitch. Would you think of the movie as like a movie, not as like... As a uh, movie, yeah, it was very difficult to like... That's why I found it difficult to keep notes on it, because it didn't, like you said, it didn't follow any beats at all. It was just like, here's the premise, here are the shitheads running the experiment, we're not going to explore any of them really, here's just 40 minutes of torture the end <laughs> i was like oh so it was it was because the the ending just kind of came abruptly too like he just suddenly comes to a revelation that he's like oh right i'm actually a piece of shit yeah, yeah. i think it was it's definitely more leaning towards like documentary than full-on like hollywood film type deal it's more just uh their best representation with with chucking in a minimal amount of um effort yeah <laughs> yeah effort's the most money. like we don't we don't have any ideas we have a little bit of money and some actors and they're like all right let's flip through the folders what has happened in the past 
done. Yeah, like I, it, I mean, it's probably because the like the the former, um, the former uh, guy that was in jail, um, he was in what was he in? I think he was in some like fucking vampire TV show that I watched at one point. Um, but he's like a really vampire good Diaries? actor, and I was like, no, um, I forget what it was. But anyways, um. But, like, I think if they had shortened the actual experiment part and then, like, maybe explored, uh, like, when they had them talking to each other at the end, like, maybe explore that a little bit more to, like, get, like, the reaction of the guards to be like, yo, you treated me like a piece of shit. Like, what, like, the one guy had regrets, the other guy didn't, like, and just explore that a bit more. Um, the one guy, like, the the former inmate, like, he was fucked up because he's like, I became the thing that I hated so much, like. But then we never really see him again. Like they could have explored a lot more of that stuff, I think, to make it a better like movie. Even if we don't have papers on what happened with those people, like, you could just kind of explore those stories. Yeah, like make me actually care about any of the characters in this movie. Yeah, you can also go in to explain like some of the things that actually happened. Um, uh, it was fairly recent. I think it was like two years ago. Um, the guy that freaked out in the closet and left. Uh, the first prisoner, he actually came out and said that what what actually happened was he asked the guards for his books because he thought he was just going to be able to lay around and study for, like, the, the two weeks. And when the guards denied him his books, he started, like, hatching a plan. So that was entirely fake. Like, he tried a bunch of stuff before that to try and, like, get kicked out or go home. And that that was the final thing that worked, was him freaking out in a closet. And then he went... uh went home and studied for his exams. I mean, it still shows how stupid he is when he'd rather freak out in a closet than just say, I'm leaving now. I no longer consent. <laughs> well, that way, like, I might not get paid. If that might have been in the contract, right? Like, if, if I say I exit the experiment and I'm, I'm done, I walk away from the money as well. But if I freak out no, in the perhaps. closet, I can still make that sweet, sweet $30 because that was the second day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Wait, it's, I mean... They... Sorry, in the no. in the parole hearings, the girl asked the one guy like for his birthday. He's like, "Would you give up your money to go?" And he's like, "Yes." So that like doesn't that just <laughs> like what? But that was for parole. That was for that not actually. Yeah, yeah that right? was day like, three. Just a day. Yeah. Uh, also, the fifteen dollars a day is about the equivalent to ninety five dollars a day now. So I mean. It's not nothing for college students. No, the one guy was homeless. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. As, as a movie, definitely wasn't up there. Um, as, like, a... Not even, like, a biopic, but as, like, a documentary style. I think it show it was fairly well done, like, explaining everything and, and showing what would actually happen i wish the if they were going to go with like a documentary thing they should have gone with everything that was like wrong with the experiment like i don't mean just like the ethics and whatnot just how the experiment the quote experiment it wasn't even an experiment because like they said in the movie it had no independent variable there was no control group there was nothing to compare it to it was a demonstration it wasn't anything and they i mean it's this might just be because I, I am interested in statistics and whatnot, but they never went into like why literally every part of the experiment was incorrect and completely unusable. So uh, I've never studied psych or anything, but from what I recall, when you want to do an experiment like that, like don't you normally have to submit it to a board of ethics before it even gets approved or is it... The this was like just prior to that. Just prior to this. Yeah. Okay. This, it actually might have been the the beginning. The catalyst. Of the, yeah. Of the ethics yeah. boards. Yeah. Um, gotcha. okay. But yeah, normally, normally that's what you have to do. You have to write up a proposal, um, explain literally everything in that proposal, any um, any like stimuli you're going to be using or or anything like that. Submit it to the ethics board. They run through it all. Even if they find like the smallest little thing. And you got to go through, redo it, make sure everything is like crystal, crystal clear. But so, was there actually like a group of like four or whatever it was 
psychologists all working on this and none of them found that like hey we're missing like a whole part of this experiment to make it a real experiment like i could see was... one guy fucking that up but like four of them the main guy was a psychologist the other ones were all like undergrad students wanting like a thesis and shit like that okay so they were just following his lead and he yeah just... he was the boss Whatever. and you just do what your boss says this is basically yeah. the whole point of the movie right like yeah the experiment if it wasn't for john wayne none of that shit would have happened right like the experiment showed less that power corrupts and more that power has complete control over you if someone is in a state of power over you you will do what they say even if you don't agree with it the the guards all did what they did one because of john wayne john wayne was is just an asshole right that's just character but uh they were all pushed into being harder when the prisoners weren't doing what they wanted to they were physically told by the person employing them to push them harder to do these kind of things right like the the experiment is beyond worthless as a like commentary on just getting power what happens to a person but it's stronger correlated to what happens if someone of power tells you to do something. Yeah, it's it's the that's why they use prisons and, or prisoners and prison guards is to show the the effects of, of power in an authoritative um, person or like a someone of authority or someone that's higher up. Yeah, the original intent of the experiment was to see like if power corrupts, right? But it wasn't the power corrupting. It was having someone over top of you with power telling you to be corrupt that corrupted. Yeah. And the, yeah, the, the actual experiment seemed like it was definitely interesting and it definitely opened up like the, the door to a bunch of stuff. Like no one's ever been able to recreate the actual um, results of this one, which is like, like they, they should that that's one of the like have they done it again uh with more ethics involved not that's then, the problem yeah, right you, uh, you can't do it again. yeah uh the bbc did it again in 2002 psychologist alec halsam and steve Riker conducted the bbc prison uh, study in 2002 published the results in 2006 and it was a partial replication of the stanford prison experiment uh with the assistance of the bbc um, which broadcast events in a study in a documentary series called The Experiment. Not to be confused with the Hollywood movie The Experiment. <laughs> uh, I guess they got different results from uh, the Bardo study. Uh, that led to a number of publications on tyranny, stress, and leadership. So, like, what was the result like the guards the result weren't... was if they weren't pushed into being assholes they weren't assholes yeah okay i believe yeah yeah down with the fash man <laughs> um it, like you you were talking about the the ethics board and whatnot there's a chance like if he could get away with it that zimbardo wouldn't have gone through the ethics board anyways because he didn't go through any of the standard like statistics procedures either he put up a random note on a fucking poster board that didn't even, like, tell anything of the experiment other than prison life. Like, you're going to get so much sample bias with that. It's ridiculous. You're only accepting males. You're only accepting males from a specific demographic. Uh, you're only accepting males in this university. And they uh did a like a replication of that and wording it instead of wording it as a um experiment like they should have if you put the prison life part like um uh, zimbardo did you're much 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 more likely to get aggressive people because quote regular people aren't going to be like oh, i don't want to go live in a prison for a while but if you sign up for an just an experiment a psychological uh, experiment and then you get there and that's what you find out you're much more likely to do it so he drew in from a specific demographic and also drew in specifically aggressive people for this study like 
everything about this was just incorrect from the start. So, like, wouldn't the, like, so say he went through the whole two weeks and he had no major issues, like, whatever. And then he would then submit it for peer review, right? Like, that's generally how science works. Yeah. So wouldn't his colleagues then be like, yo, what the fuck? Like, why didn't you do all these things? Even if there was no ethics thing, they'd be like, all these results are useless, just like yeah. Jeff said. Yeah. So, Literally, like, why didn't it? Like, the only thing that wasn't biased was flipping a coin to determine who was going to be who. And then he ruined it by inserting himself into the, you don't insert yourself into the experiment. That's just not what you do because then it, it creates something because you've already met all these people. Like, unless you haven't met them at all, but he was coaching the, like, in the actual experiment, he's coaching the guards, telling them, hey, do this, do that, uh, and stuff like that. He himself is putting himself in an authoritarian, an authoritative role. So the prisoners are, are going to be looking at him. He's saying, like, oh, the guards are doing what he's saying, so I have to do it he says anyways so literally the th the only thing that's that's unbiased is him flipping a coin to assign the roles that's it i think the scariest part about this experiment is that he didn't lose anything doing it he didn't lose like his position position at the university he didn't lose like his ability to do experiments he didn't lose anything he did everything wrong and nothing was done about it it's so weird that he would even like, like if you don't know how to do experiments properly, like why? What would even bring him to do this? Like, it it just seems weird. Like as a professor, like you you must go through this shit like nonstop every day, right? Like I would think he's just an idiot. I guess. Yeah. But then at, at the end, it said he went on to like do things about how, the dangers of whatever the fuck. <laughs> it's like, but I guess this is another way to make money afterwards. But maybe yeah. the university didn't want him after that. Yeah, but but seeing seeing the results of the uh, of the study or actually like being there, it, you can focus and, and lead off into different things. It's one of the like the, the awesome things about doing experiments and shit like that. Um, but yeah, this guy like even even like the guards knew what they were supposed to do. It wasn't just like okay, you're just a prison guard. It was like you're a prison guard and you're supposed to keep everyone in line and do all this. So, it uh, it creates a the, like the the people in there knew what results were needed for the experiment. So then it just fucked up the entire experiment because they're just like, oh okay, so they want us to just fucking torment these prisoners. Well, that's what in real life John Wayne, or the guy who was called John Wayne, said as well, was that, I mean, the guy was clearly an asshole, but he said part of the reason that he took it so far was because he didn't want the uh, experimenters' time to be wasted. He didn't want, he didn't think that they'd be interested in 14 days of people sitting around playing cards, so he wanted to do something to give them something to work with. Yeah, he also stated that he was trying, he was running his own experiment. Like that, what the guy, the actor said in the movie was actually fairly yeah. uh, accurate to what the real guy was doing. Like he wanted to see how far he could go, how far he could push someone before they did something. And the, these guys, well, they just ran them into the ground and took away their sense of uh, self. So no one was going to do anything at that point. So I think it was just. Maybe he was just trying to cover up his sadomasochism. Yeah, I think so. At a certain point, like any rational human being would go, "This isn't normal. Like I shouldn't be doing this. Even this, if if this is an experiment, something there's a line you shouldn't cross." Yeah, like uh, for how natural he was about doing it with him specifically not having to be pushed that hard. There was another experiment done by I don't remember because it's a name. Um, where they had a pre-recorded uh, reaction from an actor. Um, I don't know if it was just audio or if there was video feed as well. And the experiment was random people would be brought in and the actor would have to answer questions. They obviously don't know he's an actor. 
uh, the actor would have to answer questions or do like benign tasks or whatever like that. And if the actor got the question wrong or the task screwed up the task, they would have to apply an electric shock to them, which at first it was no big deal. It was just like a small shock. Um, but as the experiment went on, they would be told to ramp up the electric shock more and more and more as the actor got things wrong. And the actor would obviously play off. There was actually no electric shock. It was just acting. Um, and the actor would play off of it as if the shock's getting worse and worse and worse. And they found um, very similar results to what uh, happened in this one was that if there's someone of power over top of you, like the, the experimenter people saying, no, you have to do this, you have to do this kind of thing, people will just do things against their morals. There was people in that experiment that continued applying the electric shock even after the actor looked as though they were dead. Yeah, that was actually the precursor to the Stanford Prison Experiment. It's the uh, uh, Milgram Experiment. Milgram, that's it. I knew it started with an M. I could not remember. I thought it was Mueller or Miller or something. Yeah, so that one took place in 61, about 10 years before uh, the Stanford Prison Experiment. Um, but yeah, that one, that one, sh they did that one and then they were actually looking at, uh, or, or they, I think they were trying to discover, like, do the psychology of genocide and how, like, because uh, mm -hmm. the same thing happened in like Nazi Germany, Nazi where Germany. everyone was like, "No, no, no! Like you gotta like kill or, or you know punch that Jew in the nose or like, uh, but like like do damage to this person." And they're like, uh, "Okay," and they do it, and they're like, "Okay, now shoot him." What? Yeah, yeah, do it. Is that's good? And then yeah, well, I mean, you first have to dehumanize the the people first right like that's that's no. why like well the, in the in the milder or whatever experiment there was no dehumanization they were just random people off the street uh told to do this and they did it yeah that hmm. was an experiment more on authority like how far an yeah. authority can push someone yeah which which i link to the stanford experiment much more than just like innate sadism with power right because they were pushed by everyone except for again the john wayne john wayne guy uh was pushed by someone above them to do it right yeah yeah i mean there's definitely people that value order over human suffering for sure like i mean slavery the, the genocide of the jews all of that was legal at the time so Yeah, wasn't the the Milder experiment or whatever the fuck his name is, wasn't that like inspired by the like discussion about whether the people, the soldiers in Nazi Germany should be held responsible for their actions? Uh, yeah, I believe so. It says here that uh, uh, the study began about three months after the start of the trial of Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann. Um, but yeah, it was just to, it, it's to look at, to see if like, are, are these people actually like, are they doing it for out of fear or because someone of authority was telling them they had to do this or do they do it because they just, they literally believe that they were the enemy and like, all hail Germany and, and shit like that. But yeah, it was basically, are these people evil or is it because of the higher pressure? Yeah. Um, which it's, it's definitely interesting. I don't know. Um, I, I do think that, that in that world, I think that like the, the power of authority is definitely still is, is more heavy than it is now. I don't think like I think now because of all the information that's out there and stuff like that. Like even if uh, an authority like, like there's definitely the fear, but I, I think there's there's not as much fear to say no. I'm not doing that. I I'd Maybe. say it depends on like the issue. I think yeah. if you're working somewhere and your boss comes up and tells you to shoot Jimmy, obviously you're not going to do that. But I think there's still a lot of people to do things unethical in workplaces like 
siphon money for your boss uh, if you're an accountant or uh, kind of hide things that you didn't follow protocol on this kind of thing if your boss tells you to. That kind of stuff happens all the time. And while it is a lesser extent, it's basically the exact same thing. You're still breaking laws because someone of authority told you to. But I don't want to get fired. Basically it. Like People are too short-sighted yeah. to to not do that. Yeah. So is it the fear of authority or is it the fear of... It's the fear of repercussions, right? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's something that's like like just innate in people or learned because I've never felt that way. Like I've every single job I've had, I've told my boss no in some way and I've never had any like major repercussions. But maybe if I had been fired for one of those, like I would think differently, but... Could also be because you have closer relationships to your bosses than most people do, right? Most people, their boss is literally just a figure of fear in their life. They they don't have conversations with their boss every day. They don't have like back and forth discourse with them. It's literally just a figure of power over top of them that they don't even see. Yeah, I mean, I guess I usually come from like a even though I'm lower lower on the totem pole, I usually have some authority over that person in terms of expertise, I guess. So. Yeah. yeah. Or it could be the the confidence knowing that even if it were to have, like even if you were to lose your job or something like that, then you have the ability and the the skills needed to get another job fairly quickly. Yeah. Like I, it, in my job, I really don't feel like like if someone above me if a manager or something said hey do this and i was like that doesn't seem right and they go no no just you have to do it i'm like nah you do it i'm not doing that just because i had i know i know that i have the ability to go and 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 find something else if it were to come to that but yeah also i think it's uh uh the amount of responsibility on your shoulders is a big uh factor of it too right like if you have a wife two kids and a mortgage kind of thing you're going to be less likely to defy someone if your paycheck's on the line right yes yeah which kind of begs the question is like why some of these people just do it like for that electricity one like what the fuck like they don't they've just met this person and it's just like a, a voice over an intercom telling them to do something. They're just doing it. it seems kind of weird. But... No, yeah. no, no. The experimenter was in the room with the test subject. The guy flicking the switch on. Okay. Um, well, sure, but like they still, they, I. There were no read, like just randomly. Right? Yeah. Like... Yeah. Yeah. But it, it just goes to show, like, it, well, I, I guess people were more passive back then, or, or more f- afraid of authorities. Yeah. Because I, I feel like now there's a lot more resources, right? So, like, if, if you're wrongly terminated, how many lawyers can you call? Or or if if a cop does something, if someone, as long as someone gets it on video, there's generally repercussions. Huh. So, well, so you think it's, like, related to workers' rights? Somewhat, kind of? yeah. Like, we've progressed, we've progressed a lot with the rights to the individual. So, back then, like, unions weren't as common and they didn't really fight for the individual as much it was more of like we just want to protect the mass yeah and the other thing with these like with with the stanford prison experiment and the milgram experiment um it's really hard to see like not not just not just ethics wise but no one really in the um science community this is one of the one of the big issues I, I have with with everything or with all the like studies and stuff out there no one wants to recreate something that's already been done everyone wants to have their own moment they want to be like their own experiment published in the in, in like psychology today um or something like that so replicating some of these studies even if it got through ethics is very unlikely but it would be interesting for sure to see um, if they were able to get some of the same results or if there is a change in behavior from when they were actually done compared to today. Uh, the other thing is, is with them being so 
well known it, there's going to be bias in your participants already because they're going to be like wait a minute like if they're if unless you're just bringing joe blow off the street to to do the experiment there's going to be people that are going to be like oh wait like this sounds I, familiar yeah you want me to shock that guy because he got it wrong yeah okay dude yeah all right let, let's crank it all the way up to full right off the bat let's go well that's the thing they'd have to screen them like they screen juries and whatnot right yeah you can't just pick people at random but then you yeah. gotta you then you'd have to isolate um because or you have to word your questions very very carefully because if you mention anything about the previous study they're going to because of what we have today they can just as soon as they leave the room just pull up what the fuck was he talking about milgram experiment and then just look it up on their phone and then mm -hmm. boom that that person's gone already so you almost have to isolate the person until you can put them in the experiment room yeah i wonder i wonder what the like say if you did the experiment but like you, it would be very biased based on like what i'm suggesting but like you say you fill out a survey like how you feel about like prison and cops and stuff like that um before the experiment and then after um but like you take one group from like a blm rally and then another group from like a fucking thin blue line whatever fuck they call their stupid shit um and like do the exact same experiment except have like all of the guards be like actors that are just like shitheads every time and just have them be the uh the prisoners and have them fill out that survey and, and see what that would be like because i feel like the blm one would be like fuck cops before and after and I, I wonder what the thin blue line um results would be problem is is even when people are shown facts they don't change their opinion it's true so you almost like want to do them like a like scared straight like they do with kids kind of yeah because a lot of like at least the way i see a lot of like racist and shit like that is that it's just fear of the other and like that'll never happen to me and it's, what if it does Bend over, you dropped your soap, son. Yeah. No, I didn't, uh, Mr. Correctional Officer. It's in my hand. Smacks it. Bend over. Camel. Donkey. Camel, that was it, my bad. <laughs> How dare you desecrate donkey. <laughs> That's it. We're watching Shrek. Donkey, <laughs> fuck the dragon. It's canon. It's true. Yeah, don't they have a kid? Multiple. Yeah, multiple oh. freaks. I think they're... The technical term is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, all, all these all these experiments, it'd be just interesting to see what what if you guys if you guys got do you guys think you can predict what you would do if you were given each role, or do you think that it it would have to be like get into the situation type deal? I think if I knew. It was, if it was an experiment, I think I'd be pretty much normal. But if I was thrust into the, that role and kind of had to, like if I was just made a prison guard today, that was my only option. And I have, that's just what I have to do. I think I would become a lot harder than I am right now because soft prison guards can be taken advantage of and either abused or killed in prisons so just out of survival sake i probably would be but if i knew it was an experiment then there's no reason to be an asshole to the people right and i think that would ruin any chance of me changing i mean it's hard to say like i mean they say in the experiment like the people they're like you don't know how you would react or whatever but like to me like i definitely would not be like hyper aggressive and if i saw someone do it i would call them on their shit but like jeff was saying like i one person i used to raid with he he is a correctional officer and like you definitely have to treat them in a certain way but i i do think like there's a reason prisons in europe and stuff like that like they're not just cages like they they treat them like humans and they rehabilitate them so i mean treating people with compassion like that that can be a road to recovery like the putting someone in a cage and treating them like an animal is going to make them act that way and there are going to be sociopaths that are going to take advantage of nice people because they're just fucked up and like they need like a certain kind of help too but i think to just 
paint the brush of like everyone's a shit bag it's just gonna like if you treat everyone like shit you're, you're gonna get it back so I, I definitely i i agree i i think it also would depend on obviously what prison you're dropped in because if you're dropped in american prison and you're the only one being nice it's going to be much different than if you were dropped in a swedish prison right for sure yeah but i i just it, i mean it, it depends on how what this context is if it's the experiment like yeah i'm, I'm not gonna shoot anyone like shit if i'm suddenly I, I don't know why i would ever be in that situation like it would just be so foreign for me but exactly i, I mean it, it's it's hard to say but i mean yeah, that's the type of thing where you wouldn't even make it past screening because they all they want is the same thing with cops, right? Like if you show too much compassion, like you can't even be a cop or a guard or whatever. That's why if I was ever going to be in an interview, I would be uh, to be a cop. I'd be the nicest person ever. And then whoever's hand I was shaking last on my way out, I'd break their fucking arm. <laughs> I'm Establish on the... dominance. Uh, <laughs> hello, I'm your new captain. <laughs> All right, so so that's the that's the guard. What, 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 you think you'd be able to pull it? Um, what do you think you'd be as a guard if you had to just like, hey, you're the prison guard? At, like, in an experiment, if I was in the experiment, I think I would have been just, I would follow the exact guidelines. And like Justin, there would if there would be a line that I wouldn't cross, and if anyone else crossed that line, I'd call them on it because this is an experiment. We're getting paid fifteen dollars a day to do this. Like, I'd always keep that in mind, and it seems like everyone just sort of fell into their roles 100% instead of keeping in mind, like, this is an experiment. I'm not actually, this isn't happening. Yeah. Um, though, as a prisoner, I think that would work against me because they would just throw me a hole constantly because I would just be like, no, fuck you. I'm not going to do 50 push-ups right now because I can't remember the, the guy's number two down to my right suck my ass what are yeah. you gonna do hit me you can't do that you're not gonna get your money idiot yeah and then i'm in the hole yeah i think as as a prisoner as long as the requests were in line with being reasonable and in line with what would happen in a real prison like outside of violence and whatnot i'd probably play along just for the sake of playing along like if they want me to do fucking 10 jumping jacks because i couldn't remember something that's fucking whatever i don't care but if they were being asking to do unreasonable things, then yeah, I'd be like, this is an experiment. D no. I think it just depends. Like if it was, you're supposed to take everything they say seriously within the experiment or whatever. Like, I don't know. Like I, I, I would basically essentially try to unionize and I would be like, all right, I will be like the ambassador of the prisoners and whatever requests you have, like we'll try to, uh, make it work but if you're being unreasonable then every single prisoner is just going to be a shithead and not do anything you want them to do like and just make your life a living hell until you like compromise basically you're going what I would try to yeah but like if every single person is just a shithead like everyone deserves to go in the hole but only one person can or two in this situation or whatever like just keep doing that and just make their life miserable until they're like ready to fucking bargain yeah, in a in an experiment that might work, but in a yeah, real prison, obviously in a prison, me. yeah, you get fucking I tased get or shot or whatever. Shit kicked out of me, yeah. and I'd probably get the shit kicked out of me if I went to a real prison. I, I do think like uh, a fucking prisoners union would uh, do wonders though, because most of the time people act out just because they feel like they're being treated unfairly or they need a certain thing or or whatever, right? And it's like if there was a prisoners union that could call out like the bad apple guards and sh shit like that and be like, this person is doing this, 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 this is our track record. Like, and there could be some kind of back and forth and that would like save so much grief. Do we, would you, would you charge higher union dues based on the crime? Yeah. Two packs. Well, I also, I also would say that prisoners should get paid like minimum wage too. Right. Yeah. Not I think there should be zero <laughs> or one cent or whatever the fuck America pays them. Yeah, it's definitely. Do you do you think it could? Or how how would you word the the request? Like you're posting for a uh, for an experiment. How would you word the request and then get it so that, um, like to to try and get them into the into the roles that they that they're supposed to be in. Basically, trying to get them get the results that you want. Almost. Uh, you should never try that, and get yeah, them. Yeah, that's not the way you're supposed to. No, no, no. But like, but like, have them in their roles without them knowing like 
oh, okay, it's just an experiment. They want us to do all this. Like, you think it would, uh, you think the wording on the initial thing is what caused it all, or? I mean, the moment you use the word experiment, it's already biased, right? Like, you can't, there's no such thing as an unbiased experiment with humans. Yeah, but for this one, like, maybe not, maybe have them come as an experiment and, um, my so like what's is, what's your I don't, so like, you mean like how would I get how would you get it to work so that they didn't go insane you're not the one like telling these guards like you're not coaching the guards or anything like that do you think that there's a certain amount of time where they would actually just begin to fall into the roles without being told like hey this is like basically on this one it didn't have a breakdown of. Like, didn't have a list other than those those simple rules that were shown in the film where just, like, you'd refer to them as the number. Um, I don't think they actually uh, stripped them down, like, the way they did and put them in dresses, but... No, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So, strip them of their individuality, have it so that the way it was was there, but not, like, encouraging them to do stuff or inserting yourself in the experiment. Do you think that it would have different effects? Or do you think that people would just be like... Uh, it's an experiment. I'm just here to get paid. I, I would do, I guess I, the way I would do it is I would have group A that is completely dehumanized as much as possible. And then group B that everyone has a name tag. Everyone comes in like sh when they come out of their fucking prison every day, they have to shake someone's hand or like some kind of inter human interaction and, and see the difference. I, I guess that's the only way I could try to see if there was any difference um with how they would interact if that does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah would you put in a window i think that's what that like in the movie i think that's what well, drove a lot of them mad is they couldn't actually like there was no yeah. concept of time i mean that that one just comes down to like fucking human rights like that one just seems weird like why did even the professors and shit want to be locked in there that long without light like that just that's not good for anyone <laughs> like they didn't even know what day it was most of the time so i was like what the fuck yeah like i don't that yeah they should have had a yard even actual prisoners have yard time so i don't know <laughs> i think that one would just big weird. influences on that though was the fact that he didn't want anybody uh yeah because he was doing shady doing. shit for yeah. sure but like <laughs> if you were doing an actual experiment that like you didn't have to be ashamed of then I don't know it'd be interesting to actually have one done maybe not maybe don't do like the prison and the prison guards but have some somewhere where it's an, an authority role and then subordinate role and then just toss them in and see if they actually get into character but i think that just depends on the person too yeah because i mean that's a that's a huge factor because each person has a different line that they're not willing to cross. Like, that's the farthest I'll go. Like, Johnny down the street won't even step on an ant, whereas Susie across the way is already choke slamming bunnies for fun. Yeah. Like, every, it, it all comes down to the individual. I mean, that's, that's kind of what the Milgram experiment did, right? Like, it, not so much finding uh, the results of uh, giving people power, but more just what would random people do if their power was taken away kind of thing and had someone over top of them. And that's kill yeah. an innocent person. That was insane. Basically. 60, yeah, 65% of people um, actually applied the max voltage when told to. Yeah. Yep. It was just, holy shit. Uh, shit, I was going to say something. Oh, you also have to realized too with this experiment is like uh it said there's only three of the nine obviously sample size is a big issue but uh there's only three of the nine people turned psychotic while being coached so i think the giving the power isn't nearly as strong as uh uh the experiment would or the demonstration would suggest if they aren't coached to be pushed farther right now in the original experiment were they 100 percent coached because from my understanding yep. it was 
he was given a list, like the the guards were given a list and told to dehumanize them in that way, such as giving them like the dresses and everything like that. No names, they're just numbers. Um, and then a lot of the the escalation stuff was just the guards themselves in the roles basically not being monitored properly. There was a point uh, in the actual experiment, like in the movie, where the uh, prisoners were giving them trouble and the guards didn't know what to do. And uh, Zangram, or whatever the fuck his name was, uh, did coach them and told them to be tougher on them. That was basically it, but he said, do what you need to to get them in line. And that was the real catalyst to it. I think instead of having like like have the guards as um like paid actors and then just drop in prisoners like like have okay you are assuming the role of a prisoner and see if they conform to the authority just seeing like the uniforms and these are the and then just having that list of rules i i then, think they then, would to an extent right like yeah. It, it's it's just like the Milgram one. Once you put someone in power over top of you, you're going to fall into line to a certain extent. And in an experiment, outside of just being a difficult asshole, if the actors aren't being unreasonable, there's no reason to not do what they ask you to, right? Like, you're here to be a prisoner. You are being paid to be a prisoner, so why not just go along with what's happening as long as everything's okay? I guess, yeah, and then you would just have to have, like, set repercussions for not doing certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, As long as that was, like, because that would be, you could use your guard schedule and, like, the 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 listing and everything everything could be planned for the guards that would be the control and then they would just be finding out what the prisoners themselves would do yeah i don't know i'm trying to think of how this would actually work and and have the results but i think it's just there's too much you can't control that's that's the big thing about it it's and you need an independent variable right you can't just be like well here's people Let's see what happens to people without changing anything, right? Yeah. Where did I read? He said that... Just observe all people, Jeff. Easy. Pog. <laughs> what are the ones he yeah, he tried to say? claim his independent variable was like fucking the um, coin flip. He tried to claim that was his independent variable. Which it wasn't because it's not a variable you're he's even changing he literally just put people into two groups and was like okay there's no there's no control so there's no independent variable yeah i think that's when it, like later on he just said it wasn't an experiment it was a demonstration yeah but yeah, i don't know it definitely is a it's a crazy thing the uh the mind is a uh interesting thing and it's different that's what's cool it's different for everybody it's easily broken yeah <laughs> if you're a weak bitch i ain't weak i'm just squishy and i'd give this movie oh yeah we didn't even read it yeah. <laughs> i'd give it a four to ten because it, it like as a movie eh knowing about the experiment and everything it makes it a little bit better but if if i was just joe schmo walking off the street no mask into a movie theater watching the Stanford prison experiment. I'd go, why is there so much poop in that bucket? Yeah, that was a... What did I give El Tigre? Uh, like a two and a half or a two, something like that. Oof. Yeah, I would say it's like a three and a half. You like this movie more than El Tigre? Ugh. Unlucky. <laughs> I gotta understand it without having to read. That's, that's I mean, I didn't experience. like enjoy it, but like it, I wasn't bored. I guess. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, for me, once the climax ended halfway through the movie, I was bored because they worked everything up and then nothing happened. And yeah, yeah. So this is to me, this is the worst movie by far we've watched. I'm gonna give it a one because it didn't follow movie things. It got things from the actual experiment wrong it was like halfway between a documentary and a 
entertainment film. And to me, this thing didn't do anything right. And but up until the halfway point, I was interested. And then once he, the guy who was having a breakdown, just left off screen, I just completely lost all interest in the movie. And then basically nothing happened after that, anyway. So yeah, Ooh. I'd uh, I go probably I give it a four. Like the the acting was was all like it was it was decent acting and stuff like that. Um, everything like it kept me interested in what was going on, but uh, yeah, being all over the place and 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 stuff like that, it definitely was a uh, bit of a difficult watch. Recommended watch because it's, it's uh, at least gives you some idea of what actually happened, um, even though it wasn't like fully there, but. Um, gives you an understanding. So, and then uh, someone else do the math on that because I didn't write down anyone's writings. It's probably like a uh, math there was man. A four, there was a four, a four, a one, and what'd you give it, Justin? A three? Three and a half. So eleven and a half. All right. So let's determine what we're gonna do next week. All right. Let's see if we can finally get Jeff above. A five, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I gave Dark Tower above a five, didn't I? Oh, you fucking better not have. <laughs> or it's the highest rated movie I've given. I so think far. you gave it like a five and a half or something. Yeah. All right, three. Uh, so that is you rolled a D fourteen and rolled a three. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. I see what you're doing now. Never mind. Uh, get out is uh going to be our next one. That's the one directed by Jordan Peele, the comedian. Is he like the the Key and Peele Peele? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's oh, definitely. This I actually one know that person. It's about racism. That boy yeah. about range. So that will be uh our our next one. Um other than that, you can follow us on uh Twitter, uh Spotify, subscribe and and like us on on the YouTubes by the rail Love side. Me. Um, congrats, Joe Biden. Thank God that. Thank you, America, for doing the bare minimum. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about your racism with the next movie. My racism? Huh? No, not no. your racism. America's racism. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, Biden's going to pass away. It goes deep, deep into your mind. Ooh. That's a spoiler. I give the Have Milgram this movie on oh, a one out of ten. Yes, I've seen this movie. Already. All right. The what experiment? Jordan, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Milgram experiment. Oh. Please.